welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman, and we had the opportunity to speak with Bulletproof Stockings, an all-female Hasidic rock group. Let's take a closer look. So tell us how you got started. I started writing music in April 2011, um, around Pesach time. I had just gotten divorced, and I unexpectedly started getting music in my head and just started writing it down. I had been, you know, I'd been into music since the beginning of time and I'd been playing music and singing but I had never been writing and I had definitely not been performing um, you know or playing original music so I started playing music I started writing music and uh, I had been doing that for a few months and um, yeah I decided that I wanted to create a, an all-female band I realized that people were really responding to the music and people were excited about it it was something that they had never heard before. Um, it has a somewhat um, secular, not a secular sound, but a more easily accessible sound that, you know, that's accessible to not just the from community per se. And, um, but it's still religious music. It still has religious content. Um, and so I realized that, you know, it's definitely something that people need. It's definitely something that doesn't exist up until now in the Jewish community. Like, I mean, there are definitely talented musicians and there are definitely people making music, but the type of music they're making is is, is different. Yeah, exactly. And even the concert scene is different. You know, concerts are generally, they're, they're generally mixed but separated at the same time. There's usually men and women there, but, you know, there's a mechitza and the men are on one side rocking out, jumping up and down, acting crazy, and the women are on the other side just kind of, shimmying <laughs> uncomfortably like can I move I don't think I can can I sing out loud probably not there are enough women here that my voice will be muted in the crowd but I don't know it's not really done you know but there aren't really women only concerts there aren't places or if there are it's definitely a different style you know it's more singer songwriter more folk it's more sit down concerts you know I had never been to an all girl concert where anybody was jumping up and down and rocking out so you know once the music started coming and once you know I came to that conclusion Baruch Hashem I realized I really need to you know start finding other female musicians and and creating finding avenues finding spaces for for this for this music so um, started the search for musicians and not too long after that, I got a phone number for Dahlia through um, somebody that I had just met that night. I didn't know her at all, but she knew Dahlia. I happened to mention, you know, that I was a musician. <laughs> for some reason, decided to share with her that I was looking for other female musicians uh, for a gig that was coming up. And she was like, great, do you need a female drummer? And I was like, yes, <laughs> please. Uh, that would be awesome. She's like, great, I've got a female drummer, she lives in Crown Heights. And I was like, Crown Heights? I live in Crown Heights, that's crazy. There's another female drummer, she's like, yeah. You know, she used to tour with indie bands, she's been all over the world, and um, she's really, really great, you should definitely give her a call. She also mentioned to me that Dolly has four kids, so I was super excited, but I was also like, what are the odds that I'm going to call this woman up and she's going to be available enough and interested to start a band or join a band with a 25-year-old girl who has hardly any performing experience? And um, Baruch Hashem, I gave Dahlia a call and, you know, she, she said yes, she'd come over and um, she came over the very next night and... Um, I just we just sat down. I was like, I'll, I'll play you some of my songs. You know, you jump in if you feel comfortable. And I started playing, and she just started playing with me, and it was great. It was just a really instant connection. And um, yeah, at the end of the night, I just I, I said, you know, hey, that, that I think this is a really you know it's a good fit. If, if you're into it, maybe we could do this again. And uh, I'll send you some of my songs. I'll send you you know some of the stuff I've recorded so you can listen to it and messed around with it at home and I asked for um, her email address and um, her email address was Bulletproof Stockings and I cracked up. We had a good hearty laugh about it and didn't really think much of it until about 
you know, a couple weeks later when we were trying to come up with a name for the band because our first gig, you know, they were asking for a name for the actual act. Um, we were like one act amongst probably like 20 acts. <laughs> and they were like, what's the name of your group? And we were like, we'll get back to you. Hold on. <laughs> and that whole week, um, people were telling Dahlia and I at the same time, like, what a great name Bulletproof Stockings would make for a band. So... You know, we called each other at the same time. We're like, you know what? <laughs> like at the same time, almost we're like, Bulletproof Stockings would be such a good band name, and um, that's that's how Bulletproof Stockings. It is, it is a great name. It's like Thank one of those you. things you're like, wow, that's yeah. like it's probably the hardest thing to do is to find that that brand and that name that people be like, I'm gonna see Bulletproof Stockings. You know, like <laughs> you had it. You know, it's, just, it's just it's an essence. Baruch Hashem. Yeah, so um, I'll let Dahlia, Dahlia fill you in on her side of it. Oh, uh, my side of it. I I played drums and um, was in rock bands and toured and did all that fun rock and roll stuff. And um, and then um, then I just started wanting to feed the spiritual parts of me. So um, I kind of left it all behind and. Um, my husband was very supportive of me playing, and he actually got me a brand new drum set because I had left mine on, on the East Coast. We moved to LA, and um, I would play with him. He was a musician, and um, you know, people would ask me to start stuff for women, but I, I, for the life of me, couldn't find women who could play, wanted to play, you know, who I related to, whatever. Anyways, I moved to Crown Heights um, uh, right after my husband passed away, and I just wanted a fresh, clean slate for me and my kids. And, you know, within a very short time, I get this phone call. You know, my drums were zipped up in a closet, and, and I didn't think anything was going to happen, you know, except a dust collection was going to happen. But uh, whatever, so Pal called me, and for whatever reason, I was like, you know, decided to go. Um, check it out. It, it was really crazy. Like I, I, um, like all of a sudden I was, I was getting all these calls. Like I just moved there, and like from this one night that happened, I was like playing at somebody's house. And from that one night, I was getting all these calls. But like Perils, you know, I, I went for that one, and um, and <laughs> Hashem, um, got gotcha. you. We both got real lucky. It was like yeah. super, super. Uh, I think finding the right chemistry between band members is critical. And uh, find that the, the synergy um, comes out in your music. Um, what? How does your Jewishness play into the songs that you create? How does your Jewishness play into the songs that we create? I mean, the whole context of it. You know, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's the, the lyrics and there's the the whole way that we're choosing to pers pursue music. You know, within the context of our Hasidic kite. Meaning that you know the whole not playing for men thing, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about that, but <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. It plays in on many levels. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the lyrics are all um, the lyrics are all based on Torah and Hasidus uh, in terms of you know conceptually. Um, I like to write in a way that's open to interpretation for sure because I, it's not that I'm specifically trying to write in a way that. To some people might seem cryptic or why don't you just say what you mean? You're talking about Mashiach, just say it like that. You know, for me, I I've never really related to music like that. I like to think deeper about it. You know, I, I love Bob Dylan, I love Radiohead, I love people who can write lyrics that don't necessarily tell you what to think. It's like, here, this is this is the art and you do with it what you will. And um so that's just naturally how it comes out, but um, Baruch Hashem, I mean, I think that if you have a background in Torah and Hasidus specifically, especially, um, it's it's much more clear what the lyrics are about, and even still, there are many layers to what the lyrics are, and there are so many different levels. I'm constantly discovering more levels to what the lyrics are, like on a daily basis. I'll sometimes I'll write something and later realize what those lyrics were for because they didn't, you know, I write it down and I'm like, for some reason this just needs to be here right now. I don't really know exactly what it means. And then like a week later something will happen. I'm like, oh, 
That's so cool. Like put two and two together. But um, yeah, it's all it's it's all about real life, you know. It's and and there's I guess there's this idea, or it seems to be that there's this idea that writing in such a way or singing in such a way, playing music in such a way, even drums, <laughs> drums themselves, electric guitar, anything that's not typically used in typical Jewish music is like not Jewish or something, which is so not true. I mean, if it's here, you know, Hashem created it, it's here for our use too. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, in real life, there are, there are struggles. In real life, there are, there's happiness, there's sadness, there's all different type of emotions. And, you know, to try and express ourselves in the realest way possible is so important. You know, we don't have to be afraid that it's not Jewish or that it's, I don't know, too, I don't know, too out there, too crazy. It's like, that's how life is, you know? And, and what do we want? We want Mashiach. We want to be close to Hashem. And we should totally pour our hearts out and, and say it just like that, you know? Uh, the great part about your music is that you, you kind of feel it, like with all your um, there's, there's like a lot of emotion and power um, in, in your songs. Um, how how has the community embraced you? Um, with, uh, with I guess it's a notoriety now that you uh, you know you've been written up in many different uh, um, outlets, and uh, it's exciting. It's very exciting to see um, you know a different side. Uh, to uh, Jewish music um, that, cr that really crosses barriers. Um, so how, how have you felt uh, in you know, the response? They've been super positive. Like People are like breathing a sigh of relief, some of them. You know, it's, like, it's been a long time since they were able to rock out, you know, and, and uh, whatever, in the, in the context that they want to live in right now. And it's, you know, for whether you're talking about Balchubas reacting positively or you know, from, from birth, you know, who are hearing new sounds. I mean, there's different, there, there have been different reactions, you know, there's there's an audience for everything, it's not necessarily going to jive with everyone, but for the most part, I mean, we've had ladies come up to us and thank us for being examples for their daughters and things like that, so. Yeah. Uh, I still remember posting a poster for one of our first shows, and uh, I think it was our first self-produced show, and this woman stopped me. It was like in Crown Heights on Kingston Avenue. And she was like, "What's that for?" I was like, "Oh, it's for it's for my band. It's an all-girl Hasidic rock band. The show is for ladies only." And she was like, "Finally! Oh my gosh! Can I just thank you? I can't come because I've got kids and I will not be able to find a babysitter in time. But oh my gosh, where can I find you online?" And I was like, "Yeah, like someone gets it. That's awesome. You know, like that's why we're doing what we're doing. Like." I think that's like, like so important. Like you, you know, when you when you're looking at different communities within within uh, you know Judaism, you know women and girls they love to rock out and giving them an outlet to to do that. So um, you know, having gone to numerous uh, Jewish concerts, you see women jump in and girls like just they, just they feel the music, they want to do it, but like for 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 such a Hasidic uh, sect, like there wasn't that outlet so much. And now you're giving that option to really feel the music and love it. And I think that's that's exciting. You know, it's a it's a it's a new way to express connection to we saying to Hashem and to um, to each other and as a community. Yeah, I mean we're also definitely um, you know we're seeing a we're also working towards I mean we see it as like a global community. It's not necessarily like this isn't was this wasn't just made just for one, you know, corner of the world. This is really just for for sisterhood's sake, you know, like a universal sisterhood where, you know, women of all kinds could come and be women and be cool with it and, you know, just free to, to rock out. It's just for women to rock out, you know, yeah. in general. So it's definitely, um, you know, the doors are open and it's just really about the sisterhood. Yeah, we definitely have both Jewish and non-Jewish women at our concerts, religious, non-religious, all different types, you know, and it's it's exciting. The more of a variety of, of audience we see, the more exciting it is because it's clear that it, you know, it reaches people on more than one level. And it's it's cool because people can unite that way too, you know. What are your plans uh, for the future? Everything. <laughs> Everything. World domination. <laughs> 
<laughs> World <laughs> peace. World peace. There you go. Should do our Miss America like <laughs> World peace. Um, <laughs> um recording, yeah. touring, albums. Yeah. You know, playing. Lots of playing. Lots of performing. I have lots and lots of concerts. God willing. Is there a venue that we, you love to play in? Oh goodness, we Madison we, Square Garden. <laughs> That we'd love to play in, is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, the, it was the uh, Acropolis, I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> you know, we really want to, like, God willing, hopefully, like, the music festivals in the summer find a way to make, like, women's mm -hmm. only tents with, yeah. like, a stage for women bands specifically that only women can come to. It's, like, it's a little far out there. We got to, like... Get ease people into it, but we definitely see that it's a possibility to do something like that. You know, Lollapalooza, whatever. Yeah, that's how they created the Go Go and Kickstarter. You know, you don't know. Uh, you know, if you dream it, it could happen. Exactly. Yeah, do girl, I mean. girl parties all over the world. All right. Um, what does your family think? They're cool with it. Family is very supportive. Yeah. My family is like posting every single thing we post. Like, they'll find things before I find it and post it and send it to all their friends. There was a video uh, interview that we did for AOL, and, um, yeah, can I mention AOL on here? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we did an a uh, interview with AOL, and uh, it got over 600,000 views in the first 24 hours. And um, my parents were, like, posting it on all their friends' pages saying, please share this, we want it to go viral, <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point. But, yeah, they're big, they're big supporters, big fans, and, you know, they're always asking, like, what's going on with the music? Are you writing? You know, do you want uh, guitar lessons? Do you want, you know, whatever it is. It's awesome. Baruch Hashem. So. I think also because it's a, it's, I mean, listen, everybody's going to have their own take on it, but... From my ears, or and I think from Perils also, I think it's it's a it's a new genre of music. When there's different, you know, there's going to be elements of all kinds of things, and it you know definitely fits in the alternative category. But like you know, there's there's the whole classical element that comes through, which a lot of people identify with. And there've been like my father from <laughs> one is definitely like classical music, and he loves it. You know, it's like from that. That perspective, I think there's there was another person who just liked our page, and the only people he had as far as like likes were Bach, Mozart, uh, you know, just I see that. yeah, it was like all yeah, classical, yeah. and then bulletproof yeah, stockings, you know, yeah. so it's like there's that, and then there's like the whole Hasidic influx of you know Nigunim and like those kinds of melodies. So and then of course it's rock, rock, so gotta, right. Know. And then use a lot of different things, but yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I played a, a lot of, I lived in New Orleans for a while. I definitely, you know, played jazz and, and Brazilian, all kinds of stuff. I was playing for Mardi Gras Parade, and all that stuff plays into it. So, you know, yeah. So, I don't know, there's, listen, everybody's got lots of stories, and everybody's got lots of layers, and they all, you know, just all come out and pl play out in their own individual beautiful yeah. ways. Dolly and I were playing recently and we just like stopped and looked at each other. We were like, this really is like a new genre, Hasidic rock. It really <laughs> is Hasidic rock. Like it's not just Nigunum and it's not like oy oy oy. It's like it's Hasidic and it's rock music. Interesting. <laughs> a new genre. We're gonna start a new fa a new fad. Yeah, you ladies <laughs> truly know how to rock. <laughs> and uh wanna wish you all the luck. Um, uh, and uh, hope to hear future updates uh, because you know once you, when you know you have it and it, when you create you are creating a new genre, uh, it's very exciting. So uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more exciting stuff coming out from uh, Blue Fruit Stockings. Awesome! Thank you so much. See you the Yeah. Happy Happy New Year. As you can see, Blue Fruit Stockings blends Hasidic music and rock in a truly unique way. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching. Thank you.